Time for a confession. We've done some horrible things in video games. Mowing down innocent pedestrians, stealing our weight in gold, picking odd job in split-screen multiplayer even though everyone agreed he was banned. Many games have led us down a rough path, committing some despicable deeds that we'd have a hard time explaining in front of a digital judge. Is it the fault of us, the players? Or is it because video game protagonists aren't the infallible superstars we all assume they are? Whether it's the RPG characters that think it's their God-given right to storm into every private residence and shake down the poor citizens, smashing entire pottery collections for the sake of a few bucks, or endlessly murdering hundreds of regular guards who are just trying to make a living and support their family. Most so-called heroes are responsible for some quite unheroic decisions when you think about it. We reason with ourselves that we had no choice, or it was us or them, or we really needed that 100% achievement. Whatever helps us sleep at night, really. But in the end, we pressed the button, didn't we? Let's look at some! I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are 10 times games made us regret our actions. Spoilers, everyone. Alright? Number 10. Bioshock. One mention of this 2007 masterpiece, and it's impossible not to conjure up that iconic phrase in your head. The semen on everything! Oh, no, hang on. Would you kindly? Would you kindly get this? Would you kindly find that? Would you kindly find that? Would you kindly find that? Would you kindly get this? head to Ryan's office and kill the son of a bitch. A simple, subtle request repeated throughout the game that became a mind-blowing reveal when you finally confront big bad Andrew Ryan. The player character and the person behind the controller has the shocking revelation that free will is all just nonsense and you've been kindly led along this path by suggestive wordplay and a fake Irish twang. But even though our boy Ryan encourages us to choose our own destiny rather than obeying orders, we still end up treating his face like a golf ball at a driving range. While we may not have had a choice here, there is another aspect of Bioshock that the player should absolutely feel terrible about, and that's the Little Sisters. A little girl stabbing a corpse with a giant needle while singing gleefully to her monster guardian aka Mr. Bubbles is terrifying enough, but there's one thing that's even more blood-curdling, and that's what the player can do to these Little Sisters when they're caught. Even though they've been genetically mutated and brainwashed, killing a little sister for a marginal gain in Adam is reprehensible in any world. Number 9. Telltale's The Walking Dead Ah, oh, Telltale Games. You may be gone, but we'll still remember you. Not least for the amount of harrowing decisions you put us through. The notorious Telltale style of storytelling frequently puts hard choices at our fingertips, and nowhere was this more prevalent than in the already bleak world of The Walking Dead. Like the TV series, the game had no qualms about killing off beloved characters and making you feel kind of awful about it. Almost every chapter had us face some unsettling consequences, from choosing between saving Sean or Duck at Herschel's farm, to whether a bereaved Lily should be kicked out of the group after shooting an innocent member. But of course, the real kicker was the end of the first season. After main character Lee survives the outbreak of walking corpses, betrayals from allies, and a family of cannibals all while looking after young Clementine, he gets bit. And, uh, well, the final segment sees you switch control to Clementine, deciding whether to finish off her adopted father figure and protagonist for the entire game, or let him turn. Number 8. Heavy Rain This 2010 title was peak Dwayvid Quage, featuring the game director's trademark narrative-driven experience, along with some baffling gameplay moments. Never before has making an omelette been this immersive! Much like Telltale's signature series, Heavy Rain puts some major decisions to the player, raising huge moral questions like, do we juggle before or after shaving, and how many times is it acceptable to shout no! There are also more serious matters to attend to, like solving the mystery of the origami killer who's been abducting children, following the case through the eyes of several main characters. One of these characters is FBI agent Naaman Jaden, a man fond of using slick augmented reality goggles to help him solve crimes and play the piano. In a relatively minor scene that nonetheless stands out as a what-have-we-done moment, you're raiding a subject's house who's clearly not all there when he pulls a gun on your partner. At which point you can either shoot him or talk him down, or, like us, calm him down before he looks like he's pulling out another weapon and instinctively shoot him without thinking. Yeah! Not gonna pull a fast one on us, bucko! And then you realise he was just carrying a cross. Ah, yeah. No, that's... Oh, that's our bad. Ah, oh, whoops. Number 7. Shadow of the Colossus 
The whole plot of Shadow of the Colossus is basically an exercise in regrettable actions, taking down the gargantuan yet graceful guardians one by one, often in painfully drawn out ways, makes you feel quite guilty in the first place. Just look at this poor thing, it's not hurting anyone! And that's before you realise they've all been protecting the world from an unspeakable evil. Ah, oh, typical. Yep, your main character has been played like, like a, a damn, damn fiddle. fiddle by a sneaky demon, and makes you feel rather silly about the whole ordeal. There's one point that tops it all off, however, and that's when you end up sacrificing the one friend who stuck by you through all of this senseless slaughter. Aggro, your trusty steed. On the way to the final Colossus, jumping across a crumbling bridge comes with some hefty consequences as the structure collapses. Your horse bucks you off onto the safety of the ledge before falling to his doom below. <sighs> if only we could be as cold and unfeeling as Mario sending his Yoshi to the abyss, but we just can't fight these feelings anymore. Number 6. Undertale. Earlier on, we mentioned the classic tropes that persist throughout video games, where the self-proclaimed hero kills off hundreds of disposable bad guys in what would amount to a serious war crime anywhere else. Well, Undertale not only acknowledges that moral blind spot, but also turns a mirror on the player for being the heartless scumbag they really are. While it's stylized as an old-school RPG with all the familiar trimmings, the premise is that you don't actually have to fight everyone in sight, instead opting to flirt, charm, or who Who's a good boy? Yes, yes you are, your way out of trouble. But if you didn't get the memo left by motherly Toriel, and you do get a tad murdery, then the monsters will go full guilt trip on you in their dying moments, and if, god forbid, you embark on the dreaded genocide run, the game will remember your actions in subsequent playthroughs, meaning you can't hide from the consequences. Now even in this spoiler infested list, we've deliberately kept the details light, so if for some reason you haven't experienced this absolute gem, seriously go download it now. And then, and then you can regret your act. You can regret your actions along with us, like a support group. We're in it. Come on. Number five, Portal. We're not angry. In fact, we're being so sincere right now. Even though you broke our heart and killed our poor companion cube, yes, it may have just been a weighted box, and yes, it was only with us for the briefest time. But that cube gave us hope. It gave us belief, something to root for. In a cold laboratory environment, devoid of life, with only a malevolent AI voice chipping off at us every five minutes, driving itself and us further into insanity. But the companion cube was there for us. It protected us. It shared in our triumphs. And then you had us euthanize it. Not only could you not let us have this one little piece of solace, but you had us be the ones that took it away. You're a real piece of work, GLaDOS, you know that? In fact, we're glad. We're glad you got turned into a potato. There, we said it. No less than you deserved. No less than you deserved. <clears throat> All right, maybe we're still a, a little angry. Number four, Metal Gear Solid 3, Snake Eater. For many disgruntled employees, the idea of kicking seven shades out of your boss might sound quite cathartic. However, Snake's relationship with his former boss is, uh, Hmm, complicated. Fan favourite Metal Gear Solid 3 took the ever-growing insanity of the Metal Gear storyline all the way back to the Cold War era, with a powerful tale of fear, sorrow, and helicopter bees. I mean, betrayal. And mainly that betrayal came from Snake's former mentor known as The Boss. They were quite close at one point, although you could have fooled us between her chucking Snake off a bridge, trampling him with her horse, and humiliating him at every turn. Come on, boss, couldn't you have just worded your displeasure in a quarterly review? Like a, like, just like a normal, I just, it shouldn't be hard. I just want a normal job. Naturally, this being a Metal Gear game, it's revealed after about 47 twists and turns that this was all a test to prove Snake's loyalty to his country and teach him not to let feelings get in the way of the mission. Sounds like gaslighting to us. Doesn't sound like gaslighting to you guys? It shouldn't be allowed. But at the end, it was impossible not to feel quite horrid, knowing the sacrifices she had made, especially with the beautifully symbolic setting and the fact that we had to pull the trigger ourselves. It's, ah, it's too much. Just roll the epic theme song to dull the pain. Number three, Dark Souls. Oh, well, after the ordeal that was Shadow of the Colossus, we're glad the bosses in Dark Souls won't make us feel horrible remorse. Oh, really? A giant dog? <laughs> Brilliant. 
Come on, from software, at least make it disgusting and zombified, not cute and fluffy. Fighting the Grey Wolf Sif the first time through is bad enough, even without context. But as always with Dark Souls and the rich and interesting lore, reveals this poor pupper's true background. One, you experience yourself travelling back in time with the Artorius of the Abyss DLC. You find that Sif's master, the brave knight Artorius, fought to save the land from the dreaded Abyss, a growing corruption that if you're not careful could turn you into a purple mess like- ah, uh, duh, oh, okay. Well, clearly it didn't go to plan for old Artie, but before his demise, he managed to save his loyal, furry pal from a similar fate. And if you too fight off these menacing non-entities and help Sif escape, you get a different cutscene when you reach Artorius' grave in the main game, where Sif loyally guards his sword. Oh, look! Oh, look, he recognises you. Oh, he's all sad. Oh, he's even reluctant to grab the sword. Hey, maybe we can do an Undertale and, and avoid a fight? Who's who's a good boy? Sif, who's a good boy? Oh, oh, okay, never mind. Number two, The Last of Us. Oh, the classic sacrifice one to save them all dilemma. And it's always trickier than it sounds. Mathematically speaking, the bigger number makes sense, but then you get yourself tangled up in the trolley problem. What if the one person is a small child and the five people you save are all older people who've lived full lives? Or what if, like Joel from The Last of Us, there's a teenage girl and a trigger-happy surrogate father who's just had enough of the so-called experts telling him that his daughter's immunity and sacrifice could be the key to curing the cordyceps infection that has destroyed civilization? What, 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 if that, what if that's the one? If that is the case, let's just hope it's not your shift for surgery later. With no branching narratives in the game, you don't really have a choice, although at this point, you're likely fully invested in Joel's bloody crusade to get Ellie back, killing any scientists in the way. Only after the event does the gravity of your actions sink in, having potentially doomed all of humanity because of one man's selfish motives. Plus, shooting those two unarmed surgeons was a bit much for me, Joel. Number one, Spec Ops The Line. Games are designed primarily as a piece of entertainment, but occasionally, video games can go above and beyond to carry a deeper message, and in Spec Ops The Line, that message is clear. War is hell. The story drops your three-person squad into the middle of a sandstorm-ravaged Dubai to stop a rogue colonel and save the locals, but good intentions quickly go sour during the now infamous scene involving the use of white phosphorus. Surrounded by enemies, protagonist Walker is adamant you have no choice but to use the prohibited weapon, so you fire up the aerial device, taking shots at little white dots in scenes reminiscent of modern warfare's disturbingly casual death from above level until every last dot disappears. Then you have to walk directly through the battlefield, witnessing the consequences of your actions. And the real gut punch is the end reveal that the collection of figures at the back were just civilians. There aren't many things in video games that will hit you harder than seeing a mother cradling her child, desperately trying to protect them from the carnage that you just caused. Ugh. You can't really be jovial or humorous about this, it's just awful. So without a doubt, this player-made atrocity truly left a mark on the gaming landscape as a whole. Oh, that was an emotional roller coaster, wasn't it? Let us know of any standout gaming moments that made you feel guilty as sin in the comments below. You can follow myself and Triple Jump on Twitter here, and while you're at it, why not support the things you enjoy by having a look at our Patreon? Finally, don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and thanks for watching.